you're more diversified. When I look at the way you set up your portfolio, it's not as niche as that. Uh, no, some of these. I'm big on diversification. You're very big on it's diversification. Like the, knowing it. how knowing how to uh, diversify well is more important than almost anything. People don't understand this. Is that an evergreen principle? You think? Yes, that's an evergreen principle. Interesting. And the reason I'm saying that, the way it is, it's almost like a casino making its money. Okay. Okay. The way that you do it is you get an edge. So now when you have to make a bet, I've got a bet against the whole world. The world has a view on something is reflected in the price. So when I think something is attractive or unattractive, that means I have to bet against the whole world and whether that's right or not. That's difficult. I get it right you know, more often than I get it wrong, but I'm going to get it wrong sometimes. And so when you can take a lot of different bets, what you can do is, like the casino, you'll get your average that your bet would be, but you'll reduce your risk of one of those tables not being the table that's paying off. And so that margin, that, uh, so I can reduce my risk without reducing my return by knowing how to diversify. And I'd say that's particularly true, important for, for the people who are listening, your investors. Because what they've got to reduce risk without reducing return. That's right. That's the specialty. That's right. Elaborate a little bit more if you don't mind on that. So reducing risk without re reducing the uh, return. Because a lot of times, if I'm reducing the risk, it means my return's also going lower. But you're saying no, we're no. reducing it without even reducing the return. Right. I mean, that's a high-paying skill set to it, have. It's, it's the most important thing that you could start off doing. If you have a number of equally good likely bets but they're uncorrelated, like the casino. You know, one table is going to make me a margin like this, mm -hmm. but take another table and it makes me a margin like this, but I might have volatility about those. Let me take all those investments that I think will make 10%, so that's my return, but they're uncorrelated with each other. That means I'll still get the 10. I don't lower my 10, but my diversification means I lower my risk. So I improve my return to risk ratio. Ah. Is that an and, art that you can teach? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote about it in, there's a, what I call a section in this book, the holy grail of investing. It's a, three pages long. And it explains basically this important thing. Because when that epiphany happened to me and how I would do it, it changed everything by being able to do that. Because how old were you it, when you figured it, that I out? I can improve through diversification. I can improve my return to risk ratio by a factor of five. So by diversifying, okay, the return relative to the risk, I can keep my returns the same and reduce my risk to one fifth if I know how to di diversify well. And that's why I'm explaining it. It's not all that complicated. It's simply explained in the book. But in any case, that is the holy grail of investing, okay? That's a big thing. If you start to know that that's what you're going for, it changes everything. The real question for me was, what were the marginal benefits of diversification like? How would, you know, what is that gonna look like? Okay. And what I <clears throat> then decided to do was to think about uh, risk and the number of sample size and the correlation of the bets, broke it down to its, each of its components, right? So, to use an example, let's assume you have, to make it simple, a return, something that has a 10% risk, we'll call risk standard deviation. And let's make it simple, and let's say it had a 10% return. And let's say I add in another asset, another return asset, return stream. I add in a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, up to whatever number. How would that reduce my risk if it on average has a 60% correlation? Or if it has on average has a 40% correlation? Or a 0% correlation? How would that change? Wanted to know that, right? So that's what this chart shows, right? And so, <clears throat> So imagine you have a 10% average return. You don't know which bet is going to be better. It has a 10% average return and a 10% risk. And you add in a second and a third and so on. 
you're not going to lose the 10% because you're still going to have that 10% return, but you're going to then have a reduction and that's the reduction in risk. And if it has a 60% correlation and you have three or four, you will get a reduction that maybe is about 15%. And you could add in a thousand if they're 60% correlated and you're not going to reduce your risk much. Okay, that's important. Now, if I look at that, how that changes according to the levels of the correlation, I start to think, well, what would happen if I added in something that had a 10% correlation by way of example? Okay, now that's what that line shows. Okay, and it shows how much, okay, at about seven or eight or so, I cut my risk in half. That means I've doubled my return relative to my risk, right? Ooh, that's good. So as I go down this, I then start to understand what the power of diversification is in terms of the things that I'm going to look for. So um, what that taught me is um, the magic is in only, f you only need to do this simple thing. The simple thing is to find 15 or 20 good uncorrelated return streams. Things that are probably going to make money, but you don't know, but they have a good probability of making money. And that, but you have, that are uncorrelated, that have low correlation. That told me that's what I have to go after, right? That's the key. A lot of people think that the most important thing you could do is find the best investments, okay? That's important, okay, but there is no great one best investment that can compete with something like this. So look at this line. When this comes down, you can improve your return to risk ratio by a factor of five, right? Five times the expected return for that unit of risk. You can't pick any investments that are probably nobody's humanly capable in an efficient market probably to pick investments that are five times as good individually but so that path so it tells me about the power of diversification and balancing risk so this is the return to risk ratio that happens for each one of those you know like if I can get zero correlation and I have 15 to 20 I'll have an information ratio a return to risk ratio of 1.25 that means my probability of losing money in a year is only 11%, okay, as this thing from 40% with any one of us. So that's the power of portfolio construction and the power of diversification, okay? So it tells me what I have to go after.